So this is Lenore High School. I think it closed down in 1987. So the date is January 14th, 1938. It was a cold afternoon in Lenore, West Virginia. Lenore is a small Appalachian town of less than a thousand people. It was about 4.30 in the afternoon when shots rang out in the high school. This is the high school. So today we are here to bring you this really strange story that we just kind of stumbled across. And what, what I find really weird about it is that there's not a whole lot of information about it. And to me, especially for 1938 or any time period, it's kind of a big deal, you know? But uh, it's like everything is kind of hidden in it. The, the death certificates, you can't find them. And usually I can find those, at least for some of the people. I can't find any exact locations to any of the graves of anybody involved. And I can only find two newspaper articles about it. I can't even find out what actually happened to the killer. So we're going to go up to this school where maybe it's a little bit quieter and tell you the rest of this really interesting story. Lenore Rangers, huh? Lenore Boxing Club. <laughs> I remember coming down here to a basketball game once when I was young. And this here is about all that's left of the old school. And you can see right there uh, we'll go by it in a second. You can see that's where you go down to the basement. Um, you can see the old uh, basketball court here. I can remember coming up uh, watching a basketball game or two. I don't remember who they played when I was young, but I remember coming up here with some friends watching a game. But uh, anyhow, the victims were Andy Marshall, 55, and his wife Gertie or Gertrude, the 52. Mr. and Mrs. Marshall were shot to death in the hallway of Lenore High School where they were working as janitors. The gun wielder was Willie McGuire, a 35-year-old section worker and former Hardy District constable and husband of their daughter, Polly Marshall. Forty or more students of Lenore High School who were preparing to go home witnessed the shooting. They ran or jumped out of range of the bullets. Some of them even jumped through the windows. And right there is how you get down to the basement. That'll, you'll see in a minute, that figures into our story in just here in a second. Uh, McGuire, estranged from his wife, went to the school and found, uh, found her mother, Mrs. Marshall, in the hallway. After an argument, which lasted a few minutes, McGuire shot his mother-in-law, police said. Marshall, who was working in the basement, heard the firing and came up to investigate, only to be killed by McGuire, according to police. Wow. I'm not sure I'd trust walking in here. I mean, I go in some dilapidated buildings, but this has got a hole in the roof. <laughs> That's crazy. One bullet struck Miss Marshall in the abdomen and punctured the intestines. Another struck her in the left shoulder and ranged down to the small of her back. She died 
about an hour later after reaching the Williamson Memorial Hospital. Can you? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It looks pretty about to fall. I don't think I'd trust much of it in there. Anyway, Marshall, who was shot in the right side and the bullet ranged across his body into the lower pelvic region, uh, death ensued while he was being transported to the Williamson Hospital. He didn't make it. Only a few seconds elapsed between the two shootings. After quitting that work that day at the railroad, Willie McGuire is reported to have made inquiries in the neighborhood about his wife, and when he failed to obtain any information, he went to school to ask her parents. Look at that. This completely, you can see the windows. There used to be big windows here. They're all blocked off. We'll go around the side here in a second. Encountering Gertie in the hallway, Willie is believed to have accused her uh, of causing the separation. There was a heated argument and then the shooting. McGuire hurried away from the scene of the shooting and disappeared into the woods about 100 yards from the school. He was the object of an intensive manhunt for three days and was thought to have ended his life. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got somebody telling us we could go in and look around if we want. <laughs> it was thought to have ended his life. He then gave himself up Sunday. He had sent word through a relative he would surrender if a 14-man posse was called in. Uh, he came to the Mingo County Jail at Williamson with his father, John McGuire of Lenore. He told officers that he had been hiding out in the woods since the slaying. A murder charge was brought against McGuire, and it was indicated that a special grand jury may be convened to hear the case. What happened after is a mystery. Mrs. Polly McGuire, daughter of the dead couple, left her husband recently and was learned that she had been staying with relatives. She had left her husband because of his attentions toward another woman. The couple had 10 children and had funeral services at, the home, at their home before being laid to rest. What happened to Willie after that? We don't know. It's a blurred story with only a few, a few little news articles left to investigate. The rest of it has been lost to time. Just like this old school here, lost to time. I'm going to get down here and walk around. I'll show you, show you a little bit about the place, show you the place a little bit. One thing I do want to touch base on, you know, you get a lot of comments about find a grave. And I, I don't know if some people realize find a grave is just an app that, or even online, you can upload where a grave is, where you think a grave is. It doesn't mean that it's even true. So... Like they have cotton top someone has uploaded cotton top mounts as being at dill cemetery he's not at dill cemetery um i mean he was hung for the death of randall mccoy's daughter randall mccoy is buried up there and it's dill cemetery which is actually um one of the people that helped huh it's not locked Oh, okay. Thank you. So my point is that find a grave is not real helpful. Um, sometimes, you know, if you happen to put someone in and it goes right to where they're located, the cemetery, the address, that's just great. But unfortunately, especially in this area, that doesn't happen very often. So if they say that they're at the head of something taller, you got to then figure that out. And also, they're under different names. Okay, Gertie, her real name's Gertrude, but she sometimes they list them when you're looking it up in maiden names or, you know, nicknames or just, it gets really complicated. Like Andy's technical name is William Andrew Marshall. So you have to try all these different names and sometimes the dates are off and you know, I even tried to locate, they have 10 children. I tried to locate, you know, online any information about any of the children so that maybe I could backtrack, backdoor it that way to where they were buried or, you know, sometimes you'll find the parents with them or linked to it. But 
I couldn't find anybody except Veda and that was a dead end so either way this one may just not have a grave at the end of it Looks like this may have been one of the main entrances. Come up a set of stairs right there and then walk down the grass to the school, I guess. Can't really get around the side here. It's overgrown. Looks like there's glass all over the ground from the broken windows. That woman's coming down here now, so now that woman's coming down. I just tell her why we're here. We have, huh? Just tell her why we're here, she asks. Maybe she knows where Lenore Cemetery is. Yeah. Now you can ask. It's a pretty house. Really pretty house. All right. Oh, well, yes, I'm going to head back this way. It's a really pretty day here. I'm so glad spring's here. new camera I'm actually using right now Leo has a GoPro so I noticed it's a little shaky so I'll have to get a holder for it I'm interested to see what kind of quality it does though this flag definitely sees better days isn't it so I see Leo over there walking with these people looks like they're showing them something there definitely does pay to ask and talk to people they're generally so nice especially you know west virginia kentucky you know people can say what they want but they're really some nice hospitable people in general i mean there's bad apples everywhere but you know some may or may not know um my dad was in the military so i was born in key west florida and then we moved to maryland and then we moved to, um, my dad had a choice between being stationed in Hawaii or California. And we moved to Oceanside. No, I'm sorry. We moved towards San Diego and moved several times there. And I grew up, you know, until I was about 18 in Oceanside, California, where I then moved to South Carolina to, um, well, I went to visit some relatives because I didn't know my dad's side of the family. Long story short, I've been in West Virginia 19 years. So, I'm older than I look. <laughs> or maybe I do look it. Whatever. <laughs> but I feel like I've been here long enough and in the south to get my hillbilly wings. Don't you think? So, what is it, Sherlock? I just found the graveyard. Did you get the grave? Yeah, not yet. I, brought, I came to get you. Come uh -huh. on. Why is it there? Because that's the old that's the old graveyard. In their yard? Yep. These graves, 1800s, they're all in the backyard. These date back to the 1800s. Come on back here. <clears throat> Did you find the grave? Huh. What was this first name you're looking This for? is a Marshall. Right, that is too. These are all these are. Ow. Hmm. 
Marshall. Can anyone read that? What's that? This one's Chloe Marshall. Well, this one looks very suspicious. It looks like a two person grave. And I think I see Marshall. Maybe it's Blair. This one with Marshall on it seems most likely to me. 